My name is Amy. I'm a third intelligence analyst within Accenture Cyber Threat Intelligence. I studied physics at university, um, so that was a good introduction to sort of an analytical mindset, um, sort of um, problem solving. Um, and as part of that, for my master's degree, I, I did a project which involved a, a lot of coding, um, so doing some physical modeling in Python. And I was really interested in the sort of technical side of that and how, how that worked. Um, so I decided I wanted to sort of look for roles in technology. So I started my first job um, in security for a startup called Dartrace. Um, that was back in 2016. Um, and that was a lot of network traffic analysis, looking on client networks to find um, potential threats and also sort of working um, to sort of improve the tooling we had as analysts. Um, I then moved to a company called F-Secure Consulting. Um, where I sat in the security research team. And that was really interesting because it was a real uh, varied mix of projects. So I learned a lot about penetration testing um, and that's where I really got into sort of reverse engineering, both through sort of product security reviews and then moving into sort of malware analysis. And the malware side is really interesting. It was sort of from a, someone who enjoys problem solving, that was sort of a, an interesting challenge. So that was something I wanted to do more of. Um, so I then moved to Accenture CTI, where I'm now sort of full-time doing sort of that intelligence and malware analysis. Um, so it's a very varied role. I sit within a team that um, focuses primarily on tracking threat groups, um, largely groups involved in more targeted attacks. So that involves a lot of technical research. Um, so sort of the malware analysis is, is my sort of main uh, specialty. So pulling apart malware samples and trying to identify um, actor techniques, track campaigns, and try and sort of collate that information in a way that's useful to clients and helps them assess their risk to their organization. But yeah, it's a really varied role. So we also do um, a lot of work that's much more closely integrated with clients and looking at specific threats to them. And sort of depending on uh, what we're seeing and sort of big global events, we often sort of push out situation reports where we're focusing more on these big campaigns that um, sort of affect uh, such a large proportion of uh, industries. And then when possible, sort of, I like to work on tool development. So automating some of the uh, tasks that analysts have to do and increasing our capability as a team. I think for the first word, I'd say uh, diverse. So both in terms of the people you get to work with, who are sort of from all different backgrounds. Um, so some more technical, some law enforcement, intelligence, more strategic but also in terms of the type of work, which I kind of mentioned as if you wake up and sort of see what's happening on that day. So second word I'd say is rewarding. Um, I think, especially when you're sort of involved in a, a deep dive into a specific campaign or piece of technical research, seeing that go out to clients and actually be useful for them is, is very rewarding. And finally, I would say we collaborative. So I mentioned sort of the diversity of people you get to work with. Um, so sort of collaboration internally. Um, but more and more sort of different organizations are forming partnerships and working together. And that's really important, especially as we're sort of trying to track some quite capable actors that we're all sort of sharing our knowledge and, and working together on that. Yeah, so I think so the cl collaboration piece I mentioned um, is something that's definitely um, increasing. So there was the big sort of solar winds campaign recently and the industry's reaction to that and working together to um, sort of share information so we can actually sort of help clients protect themselves. I think that's a big piece. I think sort of moving away from sharing sort of just static indicators of compromise and looking more at behavior analytics, techniques, is definitely something that's been going on for a few years and that's sort of progressing more and more. So I think fusing intelligence into other processes, so um, incident response is a big one, but also using it to inform strategy um, and also making it more accessible for smaller organizations who sort of often struggle to defend themselves against these sort of more highly capable actors. And I think from a sort of technical point of view, um, more and more organizations are moving to the cloud. So that's sort of pushing actors to change their techniques um, and also making us as defenders need to sort of change some of our telemetry sources and some of our sort of approaches to um, doing analysis. I think just be curious. Um, it, like I sort of mentioned, it's a diverse and sort of big discipline. So you don't have to sort of come in on the technical side, that's like strategic roles, bigger picture sort of analysis. So I think just finding the area that you're interested in and sort of not being afraid to make mistakes is definitely important, but also don't be intimidated by the sort of technical upskilling. I think um, sometimes it's 
made to sound a bit harder than it is. And I think just getting like a solid base in networking, a little bit of coding, it's um, there's so many resources available. So um, if that's something that you're interested in, definitely don't be sort of put off or, or intimidated by that. So I think from a CTI perspective, I know Crest has a really good PDF giving an overview of like what the intelligence is and how it's used. So it's something that I found really useful when I was new to um, the intelligence side of things. A colleague at Ascender actually has just written a, a book from No Starch called Cyber Jitsu, which gives quite a nice sort of practical guide to threat intelligence and modeling and some of the techniques that actors use. But yeah, from the malware analysis side, which I guess is where I've done a lot of my own reading, there's um, a few different resources I'd recommend. So Practical Malware Analysis is a No Starch book that's it's really useful. It's got um, exercises for each section and it gives a really good sort of broad introduction to the field. I think conferences are a good one, actually going to speak to people in the field and, and see what they're actually um, working on and keeping up to date on what's new is really useful. Um, so I know sort of B-Sides and DC4420 and uh, two sort of um, easily accessible conferences in London. I also mentioned Black Hoodie. It's actually a free uh, reverse engineering workshop um, aimed at getting more women into um, sort of low level technology roles. Um, it's definitely an area where women aren't super represented. So yeah, it's definitely one to check out. I did that very um, early in my career and, and found it incredibly useful and found it sort of actually showed me that it was possible for me to do this and, and found that I was very interested in the area. And I think also there's um, so many resources on sort of on Twitter. So there's um, someone called Hasher is Aid who has a really good tutorial on how to get into malware analysis as well. So MIMA is a framework that um, I wrote with a colleague at Accenture CTI to sort of automate some routine analyst workflows. So it actually started that we were getting a lot of a specific uh, malware family cobalt stripe being used in various campaigns. Um, and we wanted a way to sort of track different artifacts from um, the configurations we were expecting and, and be able to sort of pull all of this information we were getting into one place and let analysts be able to pivot and find anomalies, find trends, um, so they could do uh, campaign tracking. Um, so yeah, Charlie and myself put together this framework, which um, sort of passes malware configuration data and puts it into this nice graph model that um, allows analysts to do that. And I actually spoke about that at Crest CTIPS conference. So if that's something you're interested in, um, there'll be more information uh, there.